Apple just announced the all new iPads, and this lineup is particularly interesting. But before we discuss that, let's quickly go over what was announced. As per usual, we have two iPad versions, the budget version under the Air name and the Pro version that basically maxes out every aspect of the hardware. Both come in two sizes, 11 and 13 inch. The budget version comes with the M2 SoC, while the Pro version comes with M4. Currently, no other computer in Apple's lineup uses M4, so it's interesting to see the iPad Pro getting it first, but I'm sure we will see some more hardware announcements in next month's WWDC. Last but not least, we have a new version of the Apple Pencil that has several new enhancements. Haptic feedback, barrel roll to control the shape of brushes, and find my support to help with locating a misplaced pencil. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's now cover some of the more interesting bits. First off, performance. It looks like M4 will deliver in that department. According to Apple, as far as GPU performance goes, iPad's M4 renders four times faster than the previous M2. That is great news for the future of the Mac as a 3D platform. If that kind of performance can carry over to M4 Ultra or the rumored M4 Extreme for the Mac Pro, then we will have some really exciting hardware in the coming months. I have a whole dedicated video about that, so if you're interested, make sure to check that out as well. But regular computers aside, this is also great news for 3D users who want to integrate iPad into their workflow. Apple heavily featured two 3D-centric apps on the iPad Pro segment. Octane, which was already available on the App Store, and a yet unannounced mobile version of ZBrush. This latter part is huge. The iPad is the perfect setup for 3D sculpting, and having an application like ZBrush on the go is just incredibly powerful. Whether it's going to be a full-featured app or a heavily reduced version of ZBrush remains to be seen, but I'm hopeful that it's going to be feature-rich. On Maxon's website, we can already see several artworks made with ZBrush for iPad, suggesting that the app is close to the end of its development cycle. What's unclear, though, is which parts of the image were made with the app. Was it just the sculpting or the rendering, too? Whatever the case may be, Maxon looks like it's confident enough to showcase it in Apple's hands-on demo area. Of course, <laughs> that doesn't mean much because none of the people attending the event were able to use the program. As good as these new iPads look, though, there are still some limiting factors. From a CPU and GPU standpoint, iPad Pro will be absolutely great, but memory and OS limitations will still be an issue. Currently, we can get 16GB of RAM only if we purchase an iPad Pro with 1TB of storage. The other storage options only have 8 gigs of memory. I suspect that will be the case for this new generation too. 16 gigabytes is already quite limiting for professional apps like ZBrush, so having less than that is going to limit the feature set of a pro application even further. On top of that, iPad's OS limits the amount of RAM each program can use. So in order for the iPad to be a truly professional tool, both of these issues have to be addressed. We need to be able to have more than 16 gigabytes of RAM and the ability to use the majority of that memory on a single application. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how performant iPad is or how many pro applications are available for it. Aside from these two things though, the hardware looks great. It's sleek with a beautiful OLED display that will improve an already great iPad screen. And the fact that we can use an external display up to 6K makes us second guess the need of a laptop. But again, the limiting factor here is iPad OS. Working with a stage manager, for example, is not the most productive way to work with your apps. The iPad needs a more robust windowing system. On one hand, I'm glad that iPad is not running macOS, but iPadOS needs a few key improvements in order to truly unlock the potential of the device. So I'm hoping that within the next year or two, we will see a better development pace for iPad's OS. The other thing I'm not a big fan of is the fact that they made the iPad thinner. It was an already thin device, so I would have preferred if they used that space for a bigger battery or better cooling. 
The iPad can get bulky with the added magic keyboard, but still, iPad's thickness is not on anyone's list of things to improve. But we already know that Apple will always prioritize form over function. Now, the big question, am I going to get the new iPad Pro? Since I already have the M2 version, I'm not planning to upgrade that soon. I'll first see how well ZBrush runs on the iPad I already own, and if it's choppy, then I might consider getting the new one. It all depends on how capable the mobile version of ZBrush will be, because if it's just another case of a crippled software like the mobile version of Photoshop, then yeah, there's absolutely no reason to upgrade. Let me know though what you're planning to do. Are you going to go all out with your upgrade, or are you going to stick with the one you already have? Let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.